Hi guys, welcome to Office Blokes React. I am Office Bloke Dave. I'm Office Bloke Mike. I'm Office Bloke Daz. Collectively, we are the Office Blokes. Yep. Well done. True factual statement. Disturbing so, Office Bloke. The, the, the most disturbing, disturbing Office Bloke. We're three of the ten disturbing Office Blokes. Do you More than ten, isn't there? Is there? Blokes? Oh, in fact, men, there isn't, is there? No. Anyway, who's your favourite serial killer? Eight. Eight, eight serial killers are your favourites. You have a favourite serial killer. Wow. <laughs> I have a favourite serial killer. Favourite serial killer. Not a favourite. Fucking all psychos. <laughs> what about you, Mike? Favourite no, serial killer? No, killers? I don't like any of them. They're horrible. Fair enough. <laughs> well, Fair your one day, you've always got a favourite. Yeah. Jeffrey Dahmer. Stan, Stanley Kuklinski. Okay. <laughs> Never heard of him. He was uh, like a... Or was that his dad's name? I think that was his name. <laughs> Fucking hell, you know his whole family. I read the book. Did he live near you? I read the book. <laughs> They made a That's movie done. about him. He was, your uncle? he was a mafia hitman, but because he was Polish descent, he wasn't allowed to be made. So he went under the radar for for years doing hits for the mafia yeah. because the police never associated him with the mafia. I read a book about him. They made a movie and everything. No. It's not actually my favourite. It's just, you know, I thought I was... I was, I was trying to drop you in, like I uh, know, yeah, Harold Shipbum. <laughs> Harold Shipbum, yeah. I was trying to lead you two into saying something, no. and then I was going to act like you're weird. Uh, right, ten disturbing interviews with killers. You're calling us weird. Fucking <laughs> <Okay>, hell! <laughs> <laughs> weird what you just said. <laughs> True crime's the biggest genre in the world on YouTube. So he's calling someone else weird. <laughs> <laughs> Funniest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Let's do it. Believe me. If I started murdering people, there'd be none of you left. Welcome to Watch wow. Mojo, and today we're taking a look at. I want to say it's Richard Kuklinski and his dad was Stanley. I'm just putting that out nah, there. But before I get sure, on, yeah, but it's the comment <laughs> saying sure. that's, oh, okay. that's where I get in trouble. Didn't um, what's his face then that they just showed um, Charles Manson? Mm. He didn't actually kill anyone, did he? It's no, you're course. getting mixed up with Charles Bronson. No, Charles Manson. I know that they killed um, like the group killed people and he was the leader of the group mm. but didn't they say that he didn't actually kill anyone oh, i don't know i'm not sure about i'm 100 not sure about that i would put money on he did he did i think he was i think he orchestrated it yeah and was like the cult leader and stuff mm. physically i don't think he did but i think he was culpable in murder because he influenced people to do it for him so joint enterprise yeah, 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 yeah 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 i think i think so anyway disturbing interviews with killers you admit to being evil richard we are all evil in some form or another he for this upset. list, yeah. we're looking at instances where accused murderers chilled our bones with statements or body language during interviews. Did any of these moments freak you out? Let right, us know in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> Number 10. John Wayne Gacy The Netflix documentary The John Wayne Gacy Tapes did a lot to point out the notorious serial killer's sociopathic tendencies when it came to shifting blame for his accused crimes. Shoelaces, huh? You're in trouble now. <laughs> Yeah, right. Are you afraid sitting that close to me? This wasn't the first time evidence to that end has come out, however, as documented by this piece from CBS News to Chicago back in 1992. I, I don't see. I don't believe in hitting, hitting children. I don't believe in, in uh, spoiling a child either. My my values are, su are such that if crazy. you give enough you, love to the children, you're accused of murdering 33 kids, and you say you didn't believe in hitting. Interviewer Walter Jacobson doesn't need to do much talking in his encounter with Gacy, as it quickly becomes clear that the former Pogo the Clown is trying his best to present alibi after alibi for his innocence. Bukovic is not one that I killed, so I don't know nothing about him. Gacy himself is composed for the most part, although there is a moment where he demonstrates his infamous rope trick with a shoelace that echoes the methodology of his horrible crimes. And you just turn this, and I says it causes an tourniquet. I said, that's the only knot I ever learned. Precisely the kind of knot found on the ropes. Number nine, Ted Bundy. Time can change many things about a person, including how they behave while being interviewed. The Ted Bundy featured in a 1977 jailhouse interview from KUTV News appears more in line with the suave yet cold-blooded reputation Bundy had among other notorious serial killers. You feel that everything will turn out all right, that you are innocent. Do you still feel that? Yeah, yeah, more than ever. He smiles a lot during the piece and displays body language that appears relaxed and almost... It looks like Chris D'Elia. Remember the comedian we've reacted to? <clears throat> no. No. I think we may not have reacted to his stand but we reacted to him reacting to the Will Smith thing. And right. you, you both liked him. It was mm. him sat sort of taking a mm. mickey out. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, he looks a bit of an image yeah. of him. 
happy. I'm not guilty. <laughs> does, that, does that include the time I stole a comic book when I was five years old? Bundy keeps eye contact with his interview throughout most of their conversation, and it's easy to become lulled into a false sense of security, which was exactly Ted's intention. If, if, there's, if, if someone's crazy enough and nutty enough to do something like that, I, I can't stop them. There's nothing I can do. Fast forward to the night before his execution, and we see a fearful and pensive Ted Bundy, a man seeking to shift blame for his crimes during his interview with Christian conservative evangelist James Dobson. There are forces that loose in, in, in this country, particularly, again, uh, this kind of violent pornography. Number 8. Richard Ramirez the Night Stalker, Richard Ramirez, may be one of the most frightening serial killers Looks of like all time. Man. Not, not only bit. due to the brutality of his crimes, but also the projected aura of what many perceive to be pure evil. Yes, I am evil. Not 100%, but I am evil. It's easy to see why during some of Ramirez's more notable interviews over the years, including one conducted with author Mike Watkiss. Serial killers do on a small scale what governments do on a large one. They are a product of the times, and these are bloodthirsty times. Ramirez's somewhat tense responses to Watkiss's questioning imply a coiled rage, an anger that's also exemplified by the Night Stalker's breathing as he seems to become annoyed with Watkiss. I'll tell you what, I gave up on love and happiness a long time ago. Why? I, I don't care to explain that. So let, let, the, let the quote stand for itself. Ramirez is comparatively more relaxed during a piece with Inside Edition, although that interview also hammers home the Night Stalker's obsession with Satanism, evil, and the occult. I believe in the, in the evil in human nature. This is a wicked, wicked world, and uh, in a wicked world, you, wicked people are born. Number 7. Edmund Kemper out of the all of them so far i don't know much about him but he's a scary the night stalker guy. yeah absolutely he looks, yeah. he looks proper radio doesn't he yeah oh right. massively yeah. yeah he's just everything's facial features he's really yeah. jagged you know mm. strong jawline and the eyes mm. yeah that yeah. sort of uh Evil. some some of them are quite charismatic that's how they get away yeah, with the yeah. crimes in it but you'd see him and you go yeah nice guy you know but nice smile and everything yeah. good looking guy and everything but you know if i saw him in the pub i'd leave thinking he's going to do something yeah, yeah, he, he yeah. just looks unstable, doesn't yeah. he? He's yeah, carrying yeah, he like does. a backpack in a pub. I'll be like, fuck it, we're going. Yeah, yeah but yeah. like I say, some of the others are just charismatic, aren't they? They seem mm. really nice people. And yeah. it's just, you know, mm. maybe they're even more frightening to a certain extent because of their exterior. Yeah. And what they're yeah, like. Maybe. We've seen this guy in another one, haven't we? Edmund yeah, Kemper. I think so, yeah. Yeah. There's something truly bone chilling about the matter of fact way in which the co ed killer, Edmund Kemper, describes his past in the 1981 documentary, The Killing of America. Everything went towards killing him. And I didn't. But I'm saying, wow, it's uncanny. It was almost like it was meant to be that way. And I said, wow, I've got this got to stop. Kemper's impressive intellect and well-spoken nature belie the brutality of a man who committed his first murder at the age of 15. And if it had been in a city, I would have been a mass murderer at age 15. I would have killed until they gunned me down. I wouldn't have been able to reason my way out of it. The killer even makes a self-referential joke to his modus operandi of picking up hitchhikers by putting on a pair of glasses and asking the camera whether they would get into a car with him. Now, would you get in the car with this man? Huh? Not with that mustache. <laughs> Kemper's mental state comes across as perpetually active, like a bubbling pot of water about to boil <laughs> yeah. over, while the documentary's exploitative Let me switch to my killing glasses. Yeah. <laughs> insane, wasn't they? Oh, just different colour. I know, yeah. It's a slightly thinner frame, but I mean... I, 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 he did look, like there, he looks like a serial killer. The other glasses did look a little bit like, you know, a, a dad on his way to pick up his kids. No, yeah. Back then, like in the 80s or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, Dave, you shake that beard off and grow muzzy like that. I'd never just have a moustache, though, <laughs> for that reason. Nation <laughs> pushes the creep factor of this one over the top. I am an American, and I killed Americans. I am a human being, and I killed human beings. And I did it in my society. Number six, Jeffrey Dahmer. There's no barely repressed rage within the demeanor of Jeffrey Dahmer as he discusses his history with interviewer Stone Phillips. And I acted on my fantasies, and uh, that's where everything went wrong. Nor are there any wild, headline-grabbing theatrics. Instead, Dahmer's quiet and soft-spoken recounting of his horrible crimes lends the piece that much more power. The only motive that there ever was 
was to completely control a person, a person that I found physically attractive. There's the power of shock as he discusses the failed attempts at creating, quote, living zombies with the remains of his victims. The killing wasn't, wasn't the objective. I just wanted to have the person under my complete control. There's also the power of how Dahmer's moments of shocking violence are undercut by the killer's regret for the decisions he made, and the futility of what seemed to be a date with infamy and destiny. Once it happened the first time, it just seemed like uh, it had control of my life from there on in. Number 5. Gary Ridgway Gary Ridgway, a.k.a. the Green River Killer, was one of the most prolific of all American serial murderers. Well, I whipped out my ID, and with my ID, he would be my... I put my finger over my driver's license to hide my name. Ridgway was also perhaps one of the most unrepentant, a sentiment that's placed front and center during any of his interviews. A picture of my son, David no, I was a probably normal person. Take, for example, one he did with FBI psychopathy profiler Mary Ellen O'Toole, where he very calmly describes how he would gain the trust of his victims. The only thing that would be better than that would be to have your son in the car with you. That, that would be a, a, a incredible ruse. Uh, that happened once. O'Toole manages to get Ridgeway talking in depth about his past, his upbringing, and the dozens of victims attributed to the Green River Killer's rampage. Number 4. Charles Manson There has been a wealth of interview footage of Charles... They're all middle-aged white men, aren't they? Mm, they are, yeah. yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, they are, aren't Most they? Most of them wear glasses as well. <laughs> In general, the, all the demeanours seem really calm and everything, don't you? And, you know, do you think you're a serial killer? In your head, you think there'd be like a raging beast, wouldn't you? Going, ah, oh, fucking hate everyone that, and all that. But the, 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 none of them seem to be like that at all, did Apart it? from that one, the, the Night Stalker, was yeah. it? But I, I think yeah. a lot of them are just legit psychopaths. That's, yeah, so, that's, they're, yeah, so yeah. they're just dead emotionally. Mm. Yeah. So there's probably no rage and no regret. Yeah. I suppose maybe that's one way they can be sort of like uh, serial killers is because people maybe do trust them and they will go places with where's if you look. Yeah. I mean, like that other guy at the start, I mean, normally you wouldn't go anywhere with that guy, would you? <laughs> you know, no. He turned up, you think, oh, he looks an evil, you know, stay clear, wouldn't yeah. you? But obviously these people have got a certain ways about them that, you know, people trust them. Yeah, but what you got to remember as well is these interviews have been done after the. That's the event. Yeah, true. true yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So a bit more, a bit more reflection, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. guess so. Yeah, they've had so, nothing but time to think about what mm. they've done and yeah. how they probably look forward to an interview like this. Yeah, for months, anywhere, you know, they? preparing. Yeah. And, yeah and released over the years, much of which can be used as evidence for the man's often unhinged persona. Do you feel blame? Are you mad? Uh, do you feel like Wooch Kebab Fred Frenich? Get Frenich Booch 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 And there's a lot of that here from this 1987 <laughs> no. interview with Today correspondent Heidi Schulman. I wouldn't do anything that I felt guilty about. You don't feel guilty at all? There's no need to feel guilty. I haven't done anything I'm ashamed of. However, there's also this intent to shatter the myth of Manson as a leader, and this is aided by the visual of Manson's scattershot presence during the interview. Maybe I should have killed four or five hundred people, then I would have felt better. Then when I felt like I really offered society something. Although the occasionally violent outbursts by Manson have been well documented in this piece, it's the more soft-spoken sound bites that reveal more about the man's own admitted failures and shortcomings. My awareness and my consciousness is not the same as somebody that goes to school and has a mom and dad. See, not having parents have left me in a, another dimension, so to say. Number three, Otis Tool. Lunatic. Yeah. 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 The dead. Oh, still alive. Oh, Charles Mons. Yeah. I feel like he's... Yeah, I'm not sure. Actually. You know what? I don't know. No, I don't know. Yeah, not sure. Let us know. Yeah, we'll have to it's, find out. I mean, he's one of the most infamous, isn't he? There's mm. loads yeah, of programs, yeah. documentaries and everything about mm. him. So I feel like it'd be... Would it be big news if he died? I think so, yeah. I think it'd be... I think we'd I don't know, know about it, I would guess. I think we'd know about it, but it's, yeah, it's, it's one of those, like, it wouldn't be a... Would it be national news? Would people care? But well, he's one of the most notorious, isn't he? So I still think it. I still think it'd get in the news over here. Yeah, I, d yeah. I think it would anyway because yeah, yeah. everyone knows about him. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. This interview with Otis Tool is the stuff of nightmares. Some, there are a lot that. of reasons last for week, this, this too. Film. Not the least of which. We were talking about this film last week. Really? Is it Henry? Portrait of a serial killer. Oh uh, yeah. Remember we talked, spoke about something else, and I said it was like proper like fucking nothing. Oh yeah yeah. 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 His tools, explosive bursts of laughter, and absolutely chilling smile. What do you prefer in life? Uh, sex or 
fire. Well, I like both. <laughs> Additionally, there's the explicit nature of how Toole describes his past crimes, and how he and former associate and fellow killer Henry Lee Lucas seemed to easily disassociate the value of human life. It's just like butchering a hog to see a cow. The grainy and blown out AV quality of this interview footage only seems to add to the feeling of grime and filth left over by Toole's gleeful accounts and delivery. It's like a drinking cup of coffee, smoking cigarette. Once you get into the habit, you do it more and more. Number two, Issei Sagawa. The Tamatama Suriba Nikuya san no Dana san to Oksan de Futote, Yukaina, Ojin de Stagado, Dobuts no Kaita no Shikata toka, Nikuno Kirikata toka, Kuashiko Oshi de Kremasta. Unlike the majority of our other entries, Issei Sagawa isn't technically a serial killer. However, this interview footage from Vice is too disturbing not to make our list. Sagawa's history and dark deeds are detailed in the documentary, while Issei himself describes the premeditated shooting and devouring of his classmate, René Hartefeldt, while he was living and studying in France. Sagawa's obsessions are also detailed in the piece, as well as the legal loopholes that allowed the killer to escape prison time for his actions. Sagawa's quiet and fragile demeanor undercuts his words, all spoken in equally hushed and inoffensive tones. It is a frankly horrifying and unbelievable story. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure. Just loony. Yeah, I watched, uh, I feel like I watched a thing from, you know, I said there's loads of true crime YouTube channels. Mm. I think it might be like Coffee House Crime, yeah. it might be called, yeah. that, that was about him. That's proper disturbing, and the fact they didn't go to prison for it. I, th I, I think I need to know a bit more about yeah, that. So he, didn't, he didn't go to prison about it, and he was a cannibal. Yeah. I think, yeah. yeah he's he killed and ate someone. Oh, and I think because he was in France, and then he just fled to Japan, and there was no extradition or something, yeah. and then. I don't know if there's a statute of limitations thing or something. Oh, I, can, wow. I can't fully remember. I, I don't, I'm not 100% it was the exact same mm. case. I think it was because he mm. looked familiar. I can't remember many cases like that, surely. No. <laughs> you just think you thought it would be that case, but you, you totally yeah, that's be really be disturbing that one. And the guy yeah. hasn't even gone to prison for it. It's crackers, isn't it? Wow. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Eileen Warnos. This the interview with Eileen yeah. Warnos on the E. The Charlie's Theron film. Ah. Yeah, I think I've seen it. Yeah. Yeah, that rings a bell. No. Yeah, is that? I think that's is that the one she portrayed. I can't remember what the film was called. <sighs> It escapes me. Mm. Someone will tell us. It's nice to see that they're putting a bit of diversity in this video. I was, <laughs> oh, feeling, yeah, no, I was yeah. feeling very impressed <laughs> by it. Number one. <laughs> Her execution is disturbing for a number of reasons. I'm okay. I'm okay. God is going to be there. Jesus Christ is going to be there. All the angels and everything. For starters, there are the crimes for which Warnos was convicted, but there are also the stories Eileen tells about her treatment in prison. They had, they had the intercom on in the room, and they kept lying that it wasn't on, and they were using sonic pressure on my head since 1997. Her accusations of sonic torment and food tampering speak to her paranoia and mental state during this time. And then one day I didn't wash my food off, and I was sick for three weeks, almost died. A state that gradually oh, reaches Trump. a fever pitch during the interview. Yeah. It's, 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 it's not like Donald Trump. I almost died. But, it's yeah. also the bottom lip thing yeah, she's yeah. doing. Great pause. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So it's just like that night night crawler guy, was it? Night stalker. Night stalker. Sorry. Um, you'd cross the road to avoid her, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. That, that look on her yeah. face. Yeah, She'd probably be with you though, Dave. So I'll probably have to talk to you for a while. <laughs> You'd probably, <laughs> probably, probably married to her. To her. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> probably married to her. in a pizza box. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon she stinks a piss as well. I'm just going to put it out there. It's a lot. I lost my life because of it. Couldn't even get a fair trial. Warnos's face as she directly addresses the camera is chilling, and the audience can only stare back into her eyes as the condemned... Someone said to me once, if you can see the whites of your eyes all the way around, you're fucking mental. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no shit. <laughs>
Yeah. Right. Oh, well, she needs another cup of coffee or something. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? like something. Proper hard oh, work yeah. to have your eyes open that much all the time. I know, yeah. <laughs> it must be dry as hell. If you, got, if you can see the whites of your eye all the way around. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds about right. You can't with me. I barely open my eyes most of the time. <laughs> Miller accuses society of, quote, railroading and, quote, sabotage. 2019, a rock's supposed to hit you anyhow. You're all going to get nuked. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other... Re- that works out uh, well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lunatic. <laughs> Jesus Christ. There's some fucking bellons in this There's planet. There's some weirdos out there. Yeah. Gee, yeah. it's really, really bad people. Oh, <laughs> weirdos. I thought you meant, yeah, bad people. He's all right, but he's yeah. just weird. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, it's amazing how interesting and intriguing it is for so many people like i, I like watching mm. documentaries yeah, we've, we've all watched dharma you yeah. know yeah. and uh really what they should be doing is documentaries of them all crying in their beds alone at night mm. you know to try and make it not look so romantic mm. as a lot of the programs and documentaries do but it's it's just so so interesting isn't it i thought oh, must like have them for, like with a cow prod you know, one of them, just every like, day cow prod or whatever just like just no just before the incident just go like Zzz. Really proper wind them up, yeah. So like get them on, <laughs> get them angry, slow motion, mother. <laughs> I think the best thing would be getting them all in a in a room together and filling just, it with water. You know, just uh, <laughs> cameras, few strategic weapons lying around, and just leave them. And then it's pay per view. What get a few of them together? Pay per view. Imagine, yeah, yeah. To, to chewing to, on like an arm, like ah, yes, to yeah. go to some sort of fund for the families of the victims, and everyone can pay a tenner, and they can just watch these lunatics, yeah, and pretend to be friends for a couple of days, and then it all starts getting Ooh. weird. I don't feel last a couple of days with someone he's locked. They've got that on TV already. It's called Big Brother. No, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah, all the weirdos together in that. Oh, right? no. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, some disturbing characters there. Yeah, yeah, really, really interesting. There's scary people out there, isn't there? Really, (laughs) the thing is, there's still be people out there now that are like that. One hundred percent. You know, they're they're all in prison. There's still be plenty out there. Do you see someone when you're walking on the street or in your car and you look at the car next to you, you look at them and you think, "Fuck you now, what is that?" Yeah, they're not like you. You're fucking definitely up to no good. Yeah. Oh yeah. No. Yeah. Piccadilly Gardens. (laughs) Yeah. 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 I mean, you're saying about you know how could these people still be out there and stuff and i know he's not still out there but my dad's mum her doctor the family doctor for most of my family was harold shipman yeah you know the britain's most prolific serial killer mm. yeah well, most prolific in the world i would guess yeah most yeah. Yeah. doctor yeah yeah and then my dad was picked up and hitchhiked mm. with uh what's her face myra hindley, uh, myra hindley. Mm. so you know that's yeah, two yeah. two lucky serial to be here, killers so that's lucky to be here. yeah it's crackers isn't it Told you he's weird. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. I just kill cats. <laughs> anyway, <Yeah. laughs> on that note, hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.